Thank you. Hi, well, this is Alan Sherlin coming to you from the library, from my office in the library. And I'm very excited to show you a resource today that not many people are using. And so I felt like it would be a good idea to share this with you and uh, hopefully uh, get more people to try it out and, um, and see if it can be helpful to you. Um, what is it? It's called the Roper Center for Public Opinion. And uh, it can be a very useful database uh, for getting all kinds of public opinion poll data. So uh, this can be helpful to both researchers and students and uh, uh, professors teaching in courses and so on. So let me show you how to get to it from the library webpage. Uh, the best way probably to get to it is, this is the library webpage here in front of me. I'm going to go here to this left column where it says Article Databases and E-Resource Tools. And uh, you can go ahead and follow along with me and do it yourselves or just watch whatever you feel like doing. I'm going to click on Article Databases, any resource tools. This resource is located under some of these subjects, but for now, uh, the best way to get to it is just to go to R for Roper. And we're going to go down here to the bottom, Roper Center for Public Opinion Research. And you will come to this page which looks fairly busy, but uh, you're only going to use a couple of these links, so there shouldn't be any problem. Uh, there's about over 500, close to 600,000 interview questions in the Roper Center, and it, uh, they come from about 150 different sources. So in some ways, this is better than using another resource we have called Gallup Brain, which only, uh, research, only shows you results from Gallup, whereas this has Gallup plus others. What we're going to look at is there's several different uh, features here that we're going to go through. We're going to look at this feature in the middle called iPoll, which will take us just to questions and the results. Um, and then we're going to look at iPoll Extra or Express, which then has additional features and then ultimately um, to the data itself. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to show you up here, there's a number of drop downs. One of the main ones is the iPoll login. Uh, I'm going to click on that. It's basically taking me into the iPoll search. Let me go back again. If we were to go to iPoll search, it's essentially the same thing. But I want to emphasize this idea of creating a login uh, to register with the database. Now, a lot of databases let you register in order to save your searches and so on. It can be a convenience. In this case, though, uh, registering really helps uh, open up a lot of features of the database. It also allows you, once you've registered, to actually access the Roper Center from anywhere without having to go through the library portal. Uh, so there's a number of reasons to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and go in there myself. And I've already registered. If you want to register now, you can. You click on it. It might take a few minutes because when you register, well, let me just go into there and show you. Uh, when you fill out the registration, one of the key things you're going to do, besides putting in your name and email address, is you're going to come up with yet another password and it has to have at least five characters and so on. And you want to uncheck this, I want to receive emails, of course, and to click on the I accept the uh, outrageous terms. And then, no, I'm joking, uh, joking. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, once you have that, you put in your email address. And my secret password, which I almost told you what that was. And no, I'm not going to have it remember it. So I should be in there, uh, I hope. Um, and so I'm going to go back here to the Roper Center. I hope I'm in there. I'm going to go in now. This is, we would normally come here. I'm going to go ahead and go into iPoll. And here's our main search screen. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just dive right in and uh, do some searching. And we'll talk about it as we go along. Uh, that probably is our best bet. I'm going to do a basic search for starters and just start showing you a few things. Um, for example, let's see, how about I just put in something like homeless. Now I can exclude words which might be helpful if, for example, you end up going in and finding a lot of, uh, of questions that have to do with some aspect that you really don't want to have to filter through. You can ex come back and exclude that word. Uh, you can also uh, go to a specific topic as well and have that uh, be part of the search. You can also, if for example, you know there's some great questions by a certain particular, a certain group or the survey uh, 
originator, so on. You can pick that. And you can also uh, look at the dates. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it wide open. Let's just go in here. I want to show you a few things. Now, you notice here we, we put this in. We have uh, 262 questions came up about homelessness. What's beautiful about this database is it will break them down by decades. So if you're doing looking back retrospectively at various uh, attitudes over time, you could actually, for example, uh, click on that decade. We can also go down here and I pull pl plus if we want to just those that have extra features. Those extra features are going to give us graphs. They're going to allow us to do uh, a lot of extra manipulate the, the data to a certain extent. And Roper Explorer will allow us to do even more. And then Roper Express is those that actually have data sets that you can download. I'm going to look at the 1940s just for fun. Let's take a look. Uh, we see here the gov uh, governor of Minnesota has said that the Midwest could take several thousand displaced homeless persons from refugee camps in Europe. So we're talking about World War II, interestingly. Would you approve or disapprove of having uh, NATO state take about 10,000 of these displaced persons? So we're talking about displaced persons from Europe and so on. If you'll notice at the bottom of this question, we have the overall responses. So if you see an icon with a magnifying glass, that will give you take you to the response pages. Uh, and, and if we go to this one with the X, it says that the data set is available using Roper Express. Let's go ahead and go to the first one. And as you can see here, this is back from 1948, but we do, it does show you that it breaks down uh, the top line uh, values here. 24% uh, approve of taking on some of the Europeans, 57% disapprove, and so on. We look, now let's just look at this page for a moment. And you can hover over icons below it if you, to remind yourself of what these mean. Uh, we have additional questions from this survey, which might be interesting to see what other kind of questions they asked. Uh, and we can go ahead and get to the data. I just clicked on the data link, and as you can see here, we can get to the data set. Uh, we can get to um, other links as well um, for that. Uh, let's just go back for a moment. And uh, see over here, we can download the questions. Let's say we want to take this and put this particular question into a paper. I can click on it, open it up in Notepad, and there it is. I've now got it as a text file nicely presented to me, even though it's just a text file, and uh, use that. Okay, um, as far as looking at other questions, oh, this is nice too. Below here is the methodology where it was conducted. This was conducted by the Gallup organization in 1948, and beautifully we have our view citation. I'm going to click on that, and it also extends down below an acknowledgement to the Roper Center and their formal citation. I talked to somebody from uh, the Roper Center and asked them what their citation format was, and the person didn't really know. So I have to send them another suggestion that they tell us if this is APA or what is it, or is it their own thing. But in any case, that's their idea of a formal citation, so it gives you some of the basics there. So that's pretty good. I'm just, for fun, let's go back and see any other questions from that, that era. Uh, and if we see if Harry Truman was elected today, oh, if Harry Truman was running for president on the Democratic ticket against Eisenhower or against Henry Wallace, uh, who would you vote for? So it looks like there's a lot of basic, basic questions here. What does that have to do with the homeless? I don't know. But it, okay, let's do another search. I'm going to go back here to a new search, and I'm going to put in something else. We're going to go a little more complicated search this time, uh, just to show you how to use this. I'm going to go in and do... Um, we're going to look at gun control. So I'm going to put in gun. Now we might want to say guns or guns and so on, and it will accept the asterisk. It also uses in their database the percent sign, which is to give it a, make it uh, to bring in all variations, gunning guns, gunner, and so on. In this case, though, most librarians love to use the star for our trunk. We call it truncation. And so I can do this gun or handgun. Let's try that. Handgun and again a star. I hope this works. And I'm going to use the exclude just to show you how that works. And I'm going to exclude the word ownership from that. And um, I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Let's look at that. 
And again, we could we could then begin tracking how people consider this ownership over time. Should people, uh, like for example, if I look at 1950s, let's say, would you favor or oppose a law which required a person to obtain a police permit before she could he or she could own a gun. Just for fun, let's take a look at one of those, and you can see 75% favor such a thing. I'm going to go back, change that out, and we'll smooth that way up here, let's say, to the 1990s. Now, that question may be embedded somewhere else uh, further down, and we'd have to look for it, but you get the idea um, that you could look at different time periods. What's also interesting, though, is um, let me unclick those. Let me show you this iPoll Plus. This is really fun. Thing. If I click on only those with iPoll Plus, as we go across here, we're going to see not only the uh, magnifying glass, but there's a plus in it. Let's go ahead and click on it. This one says, do you approve or disapprove of the way Barack Obama is handling gun policy? Um, is that the question we really want? Let's make sure. Um, sure, why not? Uh, this comes from May 2014. Now, what's interesting about this, you'll notice it's a little different than that other graph we saw from 1949 that just had a graph and the top line items along the side. Here we have tabs. So we can see, yes, 33% approve of the way he's handling out, 64% disapprove. Um, we don't know why exactly. Maybe they disapprove he's not doing enough or he's doing too much. Who knows? But so we can look at the age groups how they break down in terms of approval and disapproval. We can look at their education levels and then so forth, or by gender. And we can go down the line there, uh, which is great. Again, remember we have down below, uh, we have our methodology and our viewing the, cit the citation uh, for this. So this is a much more powerful kind of thing. Um, Look, you notice down here now, and there, there's another icon, Ro uh, Roper Express Download plus Roper Explorer. Let's take a look at that. Here we are. Again, we have our various uh, data that we can download that's from this particular poll. And I want to show you an exciting aspect of Roper Center is this Roper Explorer. Let's just take a look at that. Now this is a tool for manipulating data without having to have SSPS and whatnot, but you want to be able to manipulate some of those tabs we were just looking at and so on. So it's a three-step process, and uh, let's go ahead and try some of this. I haven't really uh, done this particular one, but I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do with it. Um, let's try part, is they have party ID, political parties, as our first one. So let's see, politics says, do you consider yourself a Republican or a Democrat? Let's pick that question. Okay, and now we pick step two. We're gonna, that was the row. Now we're going to pick a column. We're going to create a little, our own graph based on our own aspects here. And let's see, for my second one, uh, how about, okay, we know that we've got political party going one way. This is probably something else. How about... How about race relations? Or, I don't know, race. In general, do you think race? No, not. Let me try a different one. Let me just check a couple of these. What is the last grade in high school you completed? Okay, let's try that one. I'm going to go with education. And it generates this row and column from, the, from that same data. So, uh, in politics as of today, do you consider yourself a Republican, a Democrat, or independent? And what was the last grade in school you completed? And then the results of that question, the original, in terms of that question that was asked originally. Um, right. So we have 26% uh, were Republican with a high school degree and so on. So we can use this, this data from this uh, Roper poll to immediately begin putting together uh, various kinds of analysis which I think is, is could be incredibly useful. Um, let me go ahead now and just, let's go back to our Roper poll again. I'm going to show you a few other things. If you are teachers, uh, professors, and so on, I want to show you that there are a number of things you can use in Roper poll uh, as well, uh, I mean the Roper Center. 
for example, there's some teaching tools here. And uh, some of these are sample assignments uh, from the center. There's a sa sample uh, basics assignment, sample assignment from the center's website, and so forth uh, that can be useful. And you may want to take a look at those. Um, also, I want to show you, uh, there's uh, it says some fundamentals of polling. Uh, and talks about sampling and so on. There's a lot of educational things in here. For example, polling 101, polling 202, and so on. I just clicked on the quick links up here and showed uh, polling 101. Well, I guess that's that same, what I just showed you. From, it was also under education. And then there's also um, some other aspects here like, uh, oh, this is great. Look at this one, topics at a glance. Uh, often you may be looking for some sample areas that you may want to talk about in terms of polling. Here they've gathered together some topics uh, as samples of what IPOL has in some of the database, uh, the, the data set holdings they have. So we can look at elections or education and so on. Here's political parties and there's some sample questions. So uh, uh, which party is better at handling uh, foreign policy or the economy and so on. Let's say foreign policy, they'll automatically give you um, various graphs and so on. Uh, for that, and then you could always, always go to the full search results of uh, that particular question in iPoll, which takes us then uh, to those results. So there's some uh, powerful things in this database. I've been talking, I wanted this thing to go about 15 minutes. I don't want it to be too long because we're going to record this and want you to be able to come back and look at it and think about it. I just want you to remember that in iPoll, that there are uh, several levels, that there's the question level. But there's also, when you go in and you do your search, uh, I'm going to do another search just to refresh your memory. Let's say war, for example. I'm going to go into war. And um, I didn't do any additional things. Actually, let's say, oh, it's too late now. But uh, remember, they break down by decades. This is very useful. We've got the iPoll Plus, which will then have not only the graph, but tabs for different parts if you want to make sure that you have iPoll Plus. And you'll notice those differ by having the plus in the hourglass. And I pull Roper Explorer, which has the star inside of, next to the X. Those are incredibly useful features. And uh, you should just play around with it and, and try it. The other thing I want to show you for later, if you ever want to get another refresher of this, uh, let me go back to a new search, is that there's also an I pull basic search tutorial and an iPoll Plus tutorial that are both YouTube uh, tutorials that could be really useful to you. So at that point, uh, that's the, the overview, and I want to open up to any questions you might have.